afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today. As you can see, we have John Frost and Scott Burt here on the line with us. John is going to be talking about box governance. Um, I will let Scott introduce the subject matter and our presenter a bit more, but before he does, let me just quickly go through a few housekeeping notes. First, John has two polls for you guys today, so pay attention for those. And the second is if you have any questions at any point, you can ask them in the control panel, and John will answer them at the end. So Scott, I'll let you take it away. Great, Kristen, thank you very much. And hey, thank you all for joining, we appreciate it. And uh, it's great to hear all your, your feedback. We've got a lot of good feedback about our webinar series that we do and the value it brings to you, and we appreciate your joining. And thank you to Kristen and also Andrea Nelson, who uh, really drive that program for us. So thank you very much. We're really pleased today. We've got a guest speaker, longtime friend of mine, John Frost, going to be talking about cloud governance with Box, We're using a feature there called Box Governance. And John, I have known John for, gosh, John, long time. I'm not sure how long, but we've been working <laughs> together through Quite a while. Uh, many different enterprises, lots of different clients. Uh, we've had the pleasure of John uh, working here at Integro as well. And John right now is over at Box, and he is one of their governance uh, specialists helping clients uh, address the needs and mature and modernize and be able to, to govern their content using Box. And we're excited to have John here. But John has great credentials, certified records manager, fellow, of course. He has worked at, at many, many of large companies, in fact, companies that are on this list here today, uh, probably know John as well, and he's held many positions, including as the president of Arma International, and we're excited to have him on here. Thanks, John. As a quick refresher. Thanks for having me, Scott. Come again, Johnny? I said thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely. All right, and uh, so Integro, we are helping, we've been doing content management for a long time. We really pride ourselves on delighting our clients and helping them through the challenging situations of governance and content management and automation and the like. And there are five major areas that our clients, that you need to be going through in your journey around your content, all of your unstructured content. We also do a lot with structured as well, but focusing here on the un unstructured content, you need to analyze and know what you need to, what you have and map it and be able to be responsive to privacy regulations like the upcoming California Consumer Privacy Act, et cetera. And then the, it rolls right into the next one, cleanup. That is a big driver. American companies historically have been over retainers, and that is in, in this world of privacy and regulations and discovery, uh, over retaining, keeping everything forever is not a good idea. And so having a good program for governance and cleanup is very important. So a lot of companies are moving to the cloud or wanting to comply with regulations and uh, you know get rid of file shares, you name it. Content cleanup is a big piece of our business right now. Platform modernization, just like with John here, with getting to the cloud, the serverless products or server infrastructure as a service for your ECM systems and the like. And it really has huge benefits. Uh, that's why everybody's doing it, right? Go to the cloud. Uh, content enrichment is using machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence to add metadata and additional information to your content so that you can automatically be able to govern it and take action on it. And by the way, I'll be speaking on those topics, machine learning and AI, at the upcoming MER conference. I think John's speaking there on a case study as well. And the last thing is process automation. Mm -hmm. So taking that content and automating it through the process. So John. Thanks for being a, a guest speaker for us today. Welcome and take it away. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for being such a great box partner as well. So, Chris, before we get started, let's do our first poll. What? Awesome. So the poll is on. All right. What's your biggest cloud technology information governance challenge? So. You have information governance challenges. You have cloud technology challenges. What is the biggest one related to both? Is your, are you ensuring that content's properly retained? Are you trying to make sure that finding content you need to preserve litigation? Uh, changing your retention schedules to meet the regulatory demands or building and deploying a strategy for cloud governance? 
All right, guys, we have a lot of votes coming in. I'll give you a few more moments, and I'm going to close the poll and share the results. Ensuring content probably change, building and deploying a strategy for cloud governance. Uh, that's kind of what I expected to see. Um, you know, as things are changing now with a lot of on-prem work, uh, companies are now moving to the cloud. Back some recent surveys have come out and said about 95% of organizations are now have moved to the cloud, and about 42% are already uh, trying to implement uh, governance and automated governance policies against their uh, stuff in the cloud. So. Uh, that was a that's a good expectation there. So yeah, building a strategy, uh, strategy is step one, right? Um, uh, there are a few things that you need to do. We won't cover a lot of those here, um, but there are some some other areas we cover those, some other presentations. But uh, let's today we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, box governance in and of itself. So let's uh, let's get started with that. As soon as I can get technology to work, there we go. So interesting, um, Vivek Kundra is a C, former CIO of the United States. He, he likes to say cloud computing often more secure than traditional computing because companies like Google and Amazon can attract and retain personnel of higher quality than many government agencies. And the reason he's saying that is it's kind of a law of averages, right? Um, companies are moving more to the cloud, and you can think of cloud, for those of you old school folks, as, as uh, an internet-based terminal services. <laughs> so uh, you go to the terminal, you put in what you need for a report, and you get an output at a centralized location, right? Um, that's what the cloud is, basically. It's a set of uh, infrastructure and platforms and applications that are put together um, that you can sole source to your organization to move and manage uh, and, and, and handle your business from content to process. And, uh, and in that, there's a lot at stake, especially from um, the um, infrastructure as a service groups. The four main ones being, of course, AWS, IBM Cloud, Google Cloud Platform, and, uh, and Microsoft Azure. And, and being one of those roles and the amount of data that you're consuming from your customers on a, on a daily basis, you have a lot of brand reputation at stake. So you have to be secure. So these companies just based on law of numbers where um, where you internally are competing, your, your security group's competing for a budget just like your IT group, your HR group, your marketing group. Um, these, these companies can, uh, because of the rental, uh, you know, group, uh, rental agreements from customers and you know, everybody jumping into the kitty, can, uh, can attract and retain uh, large groups of security folks. In fact, some groups have teams that spend 24 hours a day. You have one team trying to hack in. Uh, these are employees that are trying to hack in. You have another team that's trying to keep them out. And if they find a hole, they get together real quick, they plug that hole, and they start back fresh. So this is going on constantly because there's just too much at stake from these cloud providers to not have that security for you. So so definitely cloud. Uh, you can never say that you can never get hacked in the cloud, but cloud is definitely a more secure way to go for organizations um, from now and into the future. So um, in an organization, um, currently what you have – a lot of is content fragmentation, and that and that provides a lot of inefficiencies. So you have creation that you'll create in a, in some type of application. If you want to do any type of collaboration internally, you're going to have to copy that over into some other system. You might use email, you might use uh, an ECM system, um, et cetera, and and you work it through internal process. Then you have to externally cap, uh, collaborate. Then you're going back. You're going back to email or, or some other form of technology, some type of Google Drive or something of that nature. We're trying to get that content externally. You then have to finalize that content, sign it, publish it. That comes into other applications that you need to use for both for signature as well as for uh, as well as for storage and review and and governance, right? So you may need a Salesforce for contract review. You may need a copy and open text as your record depository, et cetera. And then you, of course, they have the final retain content. In all those steps, you're doing multiple a multitude of different systems. You're you're in a lot of cases having to um, because of the inefficiencies of on-premise, you're having to move that stuff or copy that stuff from system to system to system to system, right? And and with cloud, you're you're get, you're looking for a better way to do that. You're looking for a way to reduce the number of those copies, have a sole source content platform if, or, or minimal sole source content platforms or systems of record where you can have these systems of engagement, such as Salesforce, et cetera, do the work they need to do on the business layer. And then on the content layer and governance layer, you have a single source of that content so that people can leverage and use and govern, right? Uh, you eliminate, you more properly can govern stuff, you eliminate the need for ex uh, additional copies and things of that nature. 
And so that, you know, having that and having that, uh, having those silos of information, copies of information, right, poses risk to the organization. Um, some recent polls that came out, of course, 61% uh, found two to five content silos requiring two year retention or more, right? 56% say unstructured content problem has grown at least 50% over the last five years. And 69% take on a medium high risk because they can't retain unstructured content in the cloud. They put a lot of stuff in cloud systems of engagement um, with no real means of providing a system of record to that system of engagement. So no way to actually govern that content. And so what are some of the other concerns you have um, dealing with governance and dealing with cloud, right? You have this monumental information growth. You have an increased global regulatory compliance. We've all seen GDPR is now in full swing, and even American companies are being, uh, are being fined. If you read the news recently, you have increased litigation, the discovery costs. Yes, some of the tools are getting better at, at, at working through the process, but the cost of this is steadily increasing uh, you know, with inflation and everything else, right? Corporate breaches have gone up, um, and you've had some, some very large breaches, breaches just recently. Uh, the brand reputation, as I said, um, you know, your on-premise brand, re brand reputation is, is being hindered a lot with these breaches. Um, and so cloud companies are trying to make sure they put themselves in a better position to try and protect that brand. You have an evolving security landscape because of all of these breaches and because of all these regulations. You have increased security and increased regulation and oversight to make sure that you're keeping your content secure. Um, you're only exchanging, collaborating on stuff that you need to, and you have very tight controls and reporting and analytics around that. Um, and you're trying to maintain a continued customer, uh, continued customer trust, which gets harder and harder with the use of on-premise applications. So what you're really looking for is, is an architecture to this, right? You have, um, you know, on the back layer, you have, inter uh, you have the um, infrastructure as a service. So your four main players who have the, the infrastructure and the needs, the storage, um, the initial security, the conscription and stuff to hold uh, these massive platforms and applications. From there, you want an API foundation, you want a platform that's built that can uh, handle the feature functionality of an ECM system as well as store that content, make sure there's a single source of that content uh, and leveraging that as APIs to feed that out to either uh, native applications or native UI, to integrations with best of breed business partners, or to have a custom user interface and build custom applications, right? So all these APIs, have a, you have a content foundation, you have governance, security, and, uh, and analytics, or, or artificial intelligence APIs to help work with that content, um, metadata, workflow, et cetera, to, and, and governance to help govern that content, all in one single wrapper and a platform sitting in the cloud for you. And so this is what box governance can provide for you from the governance perspective. Uh, it can take your box repository as your content of record or your system of record or your uh, cloud content management repository, and it can apply main features to control um, records and non-records from a retention management, management perspective, hold management for defensible discovery, and then content classification to apply security classification to some of that content to uh, classify top secret, et cetera. So you can uh, and put specific security policies on items that are identified as needing classification. All right, so that was our initial overview. We're gonna get a little bit deeper here. Before we do that, let's take one more poll, Kristen. Can we go ahead? How many structured content systems does your organization have that need retention policies applied? This could be internal or cloud-based. These are systems of record, if you will. I have a lot of votes coming in. I'll give you guys a few more moments here. Thank you for providing your feedback. Okay, I will close it and share the results, John. One to five. Wow. Lucky you. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I was expecting to, I was expecting actually the 10 to 20 or more than 20 to be a bit higher, but this is a pretty good mix. Um, but but what, what's good to know is what you can see is you have a lot of systems, both, uh, both on-premise, I'm sure, and cloud-based that you're having to contend with. And you have multi-jurisdictional, multi-geopolitical rules and regulations you're having to apply, as well as security, et cetera. So you have a big job ahead of you. So, so understanding, trying to minimize these systems, trying to coordinate these systems into a single or, or a very limited number of 
uh, unstructured repository so that you can properly govern that content is where you want to be, right? It minimizes risk and increases efficiency for you. There we go. So with box governance, uh, the first part, uh, the first main component of box governance is retention management. So retention management allows you to apply retention schedules to content uh, in an automated fashion. So it allows you to place um, through folder retention, allows you to place retention schedules on folders. It also allows you to apply those policies to a, uh, to a file level. Uh, through the use either natively or through the use of metadata based retention. Metadata based retention basically allows you to have a metadata template on content uh, and within that metadata template you may have a value and you associate that value with a retention policy. So an example might be you put content in and you have uh, a document type piece of metadata and that document type has a drop down list that has contracts, invoices, HR files, etc. And when you select contracts that metadata value is, is linked to the contract's retention period, and that contract's retention period is automatically applied to that piece of content. Um, in addition, you can have a global retention. This comes in handy having minimal global retentions to deal with the stuff that's not necessarily record. So you can have a global retention of, say, two, three years. So everything coming in can have a global retention, and then you can enhance and extend retention on those things that are actually records in the organization. Um, that way the repository is staying real clean with the non-record material, but you're also properly managing the record material. Um, and then you can choose disposition actions, okay? Your disposition actions are basically to auto-destroy or to, uh, to not destroy and have notification, um, or you can do both. So regardless, if you do have notifications on, you're going to get notified um, uh, configuration-wise. Those who you designate will be notified as to um, what's coming up for disposition. You get that 14 days in advance. Um, from there, the retention could be modified or you can just let things go and uh, the system automatically takes care of it. If you choose to do nothing, what happens is the 14 days uh, previous, you get the notification and then you have to make a determination. Do we apply a different schedule to this or do we just let it lie, right? So, so those are your options there with retention management. Sorry, my things acting up a little bit here. There you go. Defensible discovery. So defensible discovery allows you to create legal holds uh, from a matter management perspective and you can set those at a point in time, right? So you can put, um, you can put these in um, uh, to have um, a date range. So basically it can be from X date to Y date. You can put it as an X date start and an open-ended end date or you can just have it open-ended. Um, there are some, you know, there are some pros and cons to each of those options, um, but understanding that if you leave an open-ended date for future, anything new coming in will be placed on hold as it comes in the system. It will be, it will be caught, and if it meets the criteria, it will be placed on hold. Um, there are review and export logs of the content on hold, um, and we do integrate with leading e-discovery tools. If you need full hold management or matter management um, capabilities, um, such as notifications to uh, to place on hold and things of that nature, um, uh, document review, e-discovery review, those kind of things. We have uh, larger partners to do the heavy lifting for us on that that we fully integrate with. And then we talked a little bit about content classification, right, where you're applying security classification to pieces of content in the system. These can be placed on files or folders. Um, and you assign intelligent metadata to the policies that have notifications on them. So when a user is interacting with this content, they will see that it's a classified or a top secret piece of content. And based on that, um, security policies are automatically assigned to that, uh, that allow you to prevent external sharing um, or sharing from uh, only to specific groups, et cetera. So, and with that, you also integrate with existing high-level CASB tools and stronger classification tools. So we fully integrated with best of breed on that as well. So what's the value, right? So box governance uh, it is, is an API layer that has a user interface that's part, uh, that's a component of the box admin uh, console, um, but it is API based. And so there is quite a bit more you can do with the API set uh, than, than just the pure native, um, but it is there for 
box in the box content management platform. It helps you reduce risk. It allows you to defensively delete that content and preserve the important business content for legal holds, audits, et cetera. It helps with productivity. So it helps you um, with over retention. Scott talked about it, that earlier. Um, over retention can actually cause clogging in your system. And when you know, users are trying to do uh, searches and that kind of thing, trying to get their efficient business processes done, they don't want to be seeing yesterday's news, right? They want the most current business content. Because Box Governance works on records and non-records, you can keep that content clean, so keep, pro uh, keep your productivity enhanced, because they're really, you're keeping the content store from, from having old information and out-of-date information and stuff that's made its regulatory value, um, so that you can keep the newest and cleanest stuff in front of the user as they're running their searches and doing their work and getting their processes done. And of course, then with uh, with infrastructure, you can um, you help rationalize the infrastructure because using box with box governance and having governance capabilities, you can start to move some of that on-prem content into box and leverage box as your system of record, right? So it can become your content store. You're alleviating a lot of the back end. Um, uh, maintenance, processing, overhead, electricity, uh, headcount from from a, to do other things from an IT perspective that they're not busy having to having to manage these file shares and keep uh, these other systems going. So, um, so three main components for the governance there for the value there, and so extending the reach for you from from e discovery and records. So it's important to note that Box is. Um, you know, box governance works very well for semi-structured and unstructured content. We're not a structured content um, application, and we're also not a fully functioning e-discovery or records management tool. So if you're looking for physical records management, it's not going to be there. Um, if you're looking for high-end workflow uh, from a retention process perspective, it's not going to be there. We are a we're an enterprise-based best of breed for records and non-records, and so we handle retention management. And from an e-discovery perspective, we put that content on hold. Um, we are by no means trying to uh, manage the entire e-discovery reference model because we have our partners that do that for us, right? So, and we extend compliance well. We have numerous uh, uh, items and uh, rules, regulations, standards, that we are compliant with and, and have a compliance team that can work with you to, to, to flush it out. Um, we're, uh, where, where GDPR doesn't currently have any certification or any, or any compliance mechanism, we do have some of the best European certifications out there that the closest you're going to get the GDPR uh, uh, compliance when it comes to TUV and TCDP. Um, we are FedRAMP certified. We are, sort of, we, are, uh, we are compliant for HIPAA and FINRA. And, uh, and ITAR and a lot of these others. So um, if you're looking for a secure platform and you're looking for compliance with a lot of your federal and, uh, and state, et cetera, regulations, we are, we are a best of breed to help you do that. And so where does box governance fit in in the information lifecycle model, right? So, um, so as we said earlier, you have box as a content platform. And it's uh, box is there to be your content platform to do your work in progress to handle your processes um, to, to manage that content that's active and working and in motion right and box governance is really good at managing the, the stuff that's met its regulation uh, from a record standpoint it's good at meeting its uh, meeting the right that's out there versions and those kind of things that may not really be that are done with being work in progress and they're not records and uh, they've served their purpose but they're just sitting out there and of course handling the cold the uh, the, the hold stuff um, we have best degree partners for doing full functioning records management in and of itself um, when you're looking for the very advanced features of records management, we have partners that do that, but we do very good in baseline records management for an organization. And so we're working for you to, delete, uh, to deliver that best of breed uh, content experience, right? So with a set of APIs that allow you to manage content, metadata, collaboration, workflow, and, and, uh, and intelligence behind your content in your organization, and to serve as that system of record, we have things such as uh, governance zones and key safe to help protect, secure that information, ensure the right information is at the right place at the right time for you, and keep that protected and ensure that you're regulatory compliant. Um, all that flowing in up into a set of native applications that users can use over now over 1,500 integrations with best of breed partners such as uh, Office 365 G Suite, 
um, Xtero for EDA is approved for eDiscovery, um, Record Point and some others for records management, DocuSign for Signature, IBM, et cetera. And we have custom apps. We have a lot of our customers build complete native customizations on top of Box and leverage us as the uh, content and governance store underneath. So using us as that main system of record, if you will. And we have com the comprehensive platform and ecosystem with our partners. So as we said earlier, some of you, you want some additional records management enforcement and higher end records management uh, components. Um, we have several vendors that can help you here listed. This by all, no means an exhaustive list, but a lot who can help you, um, especially you know, with us here at Integro can help you with your email management needs and have a fully integrated solution there. Um, eDiscovery, we have these best of breed partners for eDiscovery. Um, again, by no means an exhaustive list. Data loss prevention and cloud access security brokerage or uh, security classification. These guys do the heavy lifting for us and plug into our API sets and allow us to give you the best of breed um, baseline system for an enterprise and then they plug in and do the heavy lifting that gives you the best of all available worlds at your disposal so that you can properly govern and manage your information in your organization. And you know, use cases, right? We're all familiar with some of the use cases that you have. Um, SOX compliance, trying to meet EEOC regulations, handling retention schedules, working against GDPR, trying to, to uh, working potentially against ITAR compliance if you're dealing with DOD stuff. Um, contracts management, things of that nature. So there are numerous governance use cases that you can use box and box governance for. Um, and in closing, just uh, some, of the, some of the people who are out there using us, Farmers Insurance uh, uses us for insurance claim processing, um, doing a modern records management overhaul, uh, where they're replacing some ECM systems with box and box governance for sensitive data and financial documents. Um, they're securing against the modern cloud stacks or using some of our advanced security features and as well as leveraging our legal hold infrastructure with us and, and uh, is approved as our partner. And then Raymond James is a fully deployed Ronner records management solution where they have a wealth management portal. They use it for internal external collaboration and, uh, and meet uh, FINRA compliance, leveraging the, the box and box governance platform as their system of record. So with that, that kind of gives you a good overview of what box governance is, what it does. Um, I know we are uh, have a, probably have a couple of minutes for questions, Kristen, so I'm going to turn that over to you and uh, take it away. Hey, John, Scott here. I'll jump in here. Thank you, and, and good job on the timing. We've got a couple minutes left. Um, by the way, a few people have asked about a copy of the presentation, and if you uh, reach out to either ask here or email Kristen, we'll We'll help you out there. Uh, we've also got a couple questions there on like chain of custody. So okay. how, do, how do cloud solutions handle or satisfy requirements for chain of custody, John? Oh, that's a good one, yeah. So, so with chain of custody, everything you do in box and box governance is tracked. So every time you look at a piece of, of content, every time you interact with that piece of content, um, it is tracked in the system. Who did it, when they did it, did you um, did you share any information with anybody? Did you move any information? Did you have the rights and did you delete any information? Um, and we are also considered uh, basically worm technology for firmware compliance in that anytime you make any adjustment to something in box, it creates an automatic version. So in that instance, uh, and you can go back to previous versions. So every time you're doing any type of interaction in the tool uh, in the files in box, it's versioning it, right? So. Um, that's why a lot of you who are current box users, you see we have a lot of versions going on, and that's really FINRA compliance. It's all being tracked. It's all being uh, noted. And so when you're trying to ensure chain of, chain of custody, you have the fact that you can go back to these versioning. You have the fact that you can report out on any of the stuff that's been happening in box um, from login through interaction, through move, through deletion, et cetera, that you can provide um, to prove your chain of custody. So. <clears throat> Right, we got one more minute. Let me take. Let me ask one more thing that I just want to understand better or clarify for everybody. You you yes. actually have a whole question on how many ECM repositories you have and stuff, but Box doesn't yeah. federate out and govern that content in their repository. Uh, can you no. just give us again what was that key point on uh, how Box can help you with that sure. problem? Yeah, so, so you have a lot of repositories out there, right? And so what you want to look to do is try and minimize 
those repositories. And Box could be one of the options for your minimization, right? If you have these on-premise solutions, um, you have a business that is trying to step up into the next generation, into the new age. They're wanting to interact with people. They're wanting to have mobile capabilities. They're wanting to have external sharing and collaboration. Um, Box provides that for you. So you can move some of this legacy stuff into something like Box. Uh, you can use best of breed applications like Salesforce, um, things of that nature, uh, Microsoft Office, things of that nature on top and let Box be that content and governance repository. So instead of having numerous systems where you're trying to copy information from system to system to system to try and do collaboration and governance, right. you have fewer systems. One piece of content, that one piece of content shared out to the systems, but it's maintained and controlled in one single location. So, so you're not saying it, it doesn't federate, and you're not saying definitely like move to manage, like uh, this is the one records management place, but having a universal content layer that all of the various apps like Salesforce, yeah. you can, if they all keep their Absolutely. content in the box, then you have fewer things to um, govern, and with box uh, functionality, you yep. can do that. John, thank you very much. We are uh, at the close here. That was really good and valuable. And uh, we've got some more questions here that we'll try to answer offline, I guess, one-on-one. -on -one. Yep. So everybody, thanks for attending. We Happy enjoyed it. We uh, look forward to having you again next month. Good day. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Johnny. You bet. Thanks, Scott.